Hi, friends. I just wanted to... I'm Scrap and Lizzie here, by the way. Everything I do is with scraps. I just do scrap, 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 scrap. And so I got a pile of scraps right here. Because I want to show you what I did. I've been busy. I've been busy. Well, I'm always busy. I'm always doing something, this or that or the other. Like this morning first, I was couching on this um, braid. This here is a um, piece of upholstery fabric on both sides, different side kinds, and I just sewed them together. And then I took this braid because I've been making braid, you know, just with fabrics. I've just been braiding the fabric. So I took a piece of that braid, and then I just couched it all the way around the edge. And it's going to get pages put in here, and this is going to be just a journal, just a simple journal. But then I said, oh, i got to put that off to the side for a minute. i got to do something else. And so I have this package of um, squares that was sent to me by a beautiful uh, su subscriber. I can't remember. I think it was Barbara, but I'm not sure. So what I like to do here is I like to pull out a square. Now, I don't know if these are all the same size squares or if they're all different squares. I don't know. I'm just going to pull out a square. There we go. There's a square. And um, this is, there's always a pretty side of the fabric and then a not quite as pretty side. So I take the not quite as pretty side of the fabric. And here, I'll show you one that I just did. Um, I've been doing a few. And these are just, oh, this one here I didn't use all square fabrics. This one here was more all like square fabrics. And um, this one here, I just did this one. And this one is all like, not square, rectangular, but straight edges. And so, but I've been making some of them. I'm going to stitch them together and make something else out of them. But what I'm doing with these is I just take, um, now see, there is a lot of different crumb quilting fabric, um, crumb quilting videos. And so I look at them. Boy, I search out the crumb quilt because I love scraps, you know. And so I, I, I just search and search to find um, different ideas and I'm telling you I am such a lazy person that a lot of them I look at and I say that's too much work and then I go to another one and I say that's too much work so what I do is here I get these squares well this one's not exactly square I don't want that one let me see this one's a square I'm going to but that's too much of a square so I'm going to cut that down and make it a little bit smaller and not a square it's like a rectangle but close enough for horseshoes and um so i'm gonna put that on this one i'm just gonna put that right there oh and i put just a little bit of glue on the back in the center and that'll hold that that glue will draw and you won't see that purple after a while they make special glue just for fabric but yeah no here, this is cool. This is a piece. Oh, here, this one is cool, too. This is a piece of velvet. I do not like touching velvet, but velvet is cool. So, I don't know why I don't like touching it, but it gives me the heebie-jeebies. But I still like it, so I touch it and deal with the heebie-jeebies for a minute. Okay, so I'm going to... Um, I just put a little bit of glue in the middle there just to kind of glue it in its space. I could probably use straight pins, but I don't want to. So now see, and but I'm keeping my my squares kind of, um, I don't want them real big, you know, and any kind of fabrics, you know, just any. Now see here, I'm going to go ahead and put this one like this, see, so it's down overlapping a little bit. Yeah, that will be cool. Get some brighter color in there. And different fabrics, like this is velvet, this is some kind of a satin, this is cotton, and this is cotton. And this is some kind of a jersey on this one. I'm going to get a piece of that on there. That's real silky something or other. So that's what you use as something or other type of fabrics. That's this, something or other. So I'm going to um, put that one right here. And see, I, bec I don't put much plan into this. I'm just gluing them down, you know, sort of kind of like that way. 
And um, let's see. Let's see here. Oh, yeah. Last night I was on on um, Stacy's auction, and I got another. I I won another bid on a um, another uh, journal, not journal. Um, oh, what do you call it? The fabric sample books. So I look forward to getting that. That'll be cool to get new fabric samples because I love them. I got my iron over here next to me, so when I reach over there, I kind of just iron. See how I'm overlapping them and and um, they get overlapped and they sort of, you know, because I don't want them exactly square, square, square. That gets pretty boring, you know. We don't want any boredom going on here. And so, and here's some more kind of a softy, kind of a something, but I want to I want a square. You don't have to do squares. I've just been doing squares this time for some crazy reason. I don't know what the reason is. But um, let's see what I want to do here. I want to go like this. Put that down in my crumb bin. And then here. And then I got sort of a square. And, and they're just all sort of. You know, just sort of. That's all you need is sort of. When you do scrapping, sewing... Scrap and sewing is definitely freedom. Freedom. We want freedom. Okay. Oh, look at this. Now, this is a piece of, like, corduroy. I just got... I didn't have any corduroy, but I, um... At CARES Auction... I gotta stay away from the auctions. But, um... At CARES Auction, she had some... Right at the end of her auction, too, she had some just packs of scraps she was selling. I said, oh, oh God, scraps, there you go. And so I said, yep, me, I'll take two. And so I got them the other day, and oh, my gosh, I love them. And so, see, there's a blue... And so, and so there was corduroy in there, and that's the first corduroy. I didn't have any corduroy here with all the fabrics that I do have. I don't didn't have corduroy. Now y'all be watching on. Um, I shouldn't, you know. Um, y'all be watching on my. Um, this is corduroy too, on my Etsy store. That one's too big and bold. We're gonna make that smaller. Because I'm going to be, well, I have, um, right now, all that I've got on there is my um, crumbs. Which, a bag of crumbs, you are going to get things like this size, maybe a little smaller, maybe a little bigger, you know. You just never know. Let me put this one over here. So it's right, not, not ne right next to that one. Okay. And so, <coughs> but I'm putting together packages now that are um that are going to be larger scraps they're going to be some of them are going to be 10 by 10 but they're going to be squares like this and um but i'm not giving away my i'm not getting rid of my ones that were sent to me by my friends because those are all my special ones and but oh i didn't put the glue um but they're going to be in there and they're and i'm going to make them a pound one pound so in one pound of fabric is pretty much fabric, but in them, in those, um, see like this is satin. In those packages, there'll be some satin, there'll be cotton, there'll be upholstery, there'll be lace fabric, every, there'll be so much different. So just keep your eye out for them. They will, they will show up. Okay, so we'll put a piece of this here. But here now, I am just covering the whole piece of fabric. But what I want to show you, too, is, um, let's see, this piece. I'll put that whole thing in there. Yeah, I do. And um, that one is kind of same on both sides. So and I'll just put a little piece of glue in the middle there, and that'll hold it still until I can start getting it actually sewn together. And um, let's see, what else do I need? I need to have... Do I have any of this in there? No, I don't. Oh, look at this piece. Look at this piece. 
I want this in here somewhere. I had a, another little piece of that in there too. This came, this piece came from, uh, um, from a friend, from a subscriber sending, and, um, sending me some scraps and there was only two of these little pieces and I've been kind of hoarding them two little pieces well they were about three times times this but I've been cutting them to where I can use them in more places now I just need one little spot up here and here oh that's another piece of corduroy I'm going to take that one and I'm just going to cut that to about right there yep yeah, that's what I'm going to do with that and then I have my sewing machine set on a zigzag stitch and so there right there I don't have a piece I feel like I should though I feel like I should so I got this little piece of red and this is very fine thin fabric I don't know what that is called either I used to know the names of some of these fabrics but um, I don't anymore. I, you know, some of my things, I don't remember I learned well, anything I learned in algebra either. See, it doesn't really matter. Okay, see, now the whole thing is covered, and I just got them glued down in little glue spots. So now I'm going to go to my sewing machine, and if it is shows a big mess, try not to really notice the mess. But I've got this set onto a zigzag stitch, and I'm not going to stop and go. I mean, I'm not going to cut the yarn, cut the thread at all. I'm just going to, um, I'm going to just keep sewing. But uh, I have the thread on here that I have is multicolored. The bottom thread is red, and the top thread is multicolored. So now that that glue is going to kind of hold hold them pieces. I still try and hold my piece up, you know a little bit so that they won't fall off after I get a little and see I'm going down the one side and then I'll turn it and I'll go I don't want to lose my pieces I want them to stay right where I put them be good little children and stay there and so oh stop 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 whoop my that one started squishing up do not squish up you're not allowed. Okay, let me get a hold of my fabric again here. And, and I'm stitching, getting that stitched. Okay. And then I'm going to um, go stitch up side number three. I'm going to third base now. And... go down here now see already just having the edges stitched down that helps hold it now I'm going to be going along every edge this takes a lot of thread but hey I, I don't mind it's you know I don't buy whiskey and rum so you know, if I was one of those kind of people, then I would be wasting money, but I buy thread. So that makes it better. I'm going to cross now. I'm just going to go across, and this is going to hold down. It's going to give me a little bit of help. And because this is with a, a multicolored thread, and I'm doing a zigzag threading in there. Oh, I just got hung up on a thread. Let me just get that out of the way. Okay, there. And I just go across that way. Now I'm going to, let's see. Now I'm going to start, um, now I'm going to go, now see, I'm going to have a lot of stitching on here, but that's part of the artistic part of this. Okay, see, now I'm going to turn here because I want to go down this side of this um, well, it's hard to see, but I'm going down the edge of one of the one of the pieces there 
and I've got to the end of that piece, so I want to go oopsie daisies. But I want to get all the edges of those little pieces. How can I turn this a little bit? Um, well, no, it doesn't. I can't. Well, that's close as I can get it. But anyway, um, someday I'll figure out something to do with this. Okay, see, now down here, all that almost looks like one straight line, so that's, I'm going to get all of those in there, going right straight down that line. And I'm getting that zigzag stitch, so it's like on the edge of each piece. And I think when this is done, this is, um, when the piece is finished, okay, let me see, I want to go over here to my sparkly fancy piece there. Oops, let's see, let's go this way. But have, having the thread being that multicolored thread, it really puts a beautiful touch to this quilt square. Or whatever you're going to use it for. You might use it for a quilt square. You might use it for a, on your journal covers. Because, oh, fabric journal covers are beautiful. You can even take a piece like this and you can... Oh, that one folded over a little bit but you know folding over doesn't matter either um you can take if you're like altering a book and you want to put a cover on it you can take a piece like this then you take carpet tape um carpet tape is like oh man that stuff is the bomb and um you can cover your book with carpet tape and put this kind of some of this fabric quilting quilted fabric on the book on the carpet tape and it'll be there for life i mean that carpet tape is something else i mean if it'll hold down carpet in your floor then um see i keep turning i get to a i get to a a, a corner and i turn it and then i um I'm not the best when it comes to videoing. I just do the best I can. I do the best I can, but I'm not the best. And so, but you'll see when I show you how I have this whole thing done, how it is grandiose. In my opinion, you know, my opinion. Now, some of you might look at this and say, what is that woman doing? And, you know, I... Yeah, let me see, I'll go down to this blue one. Um, but, you know, scraps of fabric. Scraps of fabric. And you know, when you're working with scraps of fabric, you are not, um, you're, you're not looking for anything perfect. You know, if you don't have a pattern, then you don't have to follow that pattern. That's good. And um, you don't have to say, oh, I ruined that piece of fabric because it's only a scrap. You can't um, ruin it. There's no way you can ruin it. It's just it's just there and it's beautiful. Okay, let's see. Oh, okay, I want to go. Let's see. I got like this is here. This isn't sewn up here. And this isn't sewn over here. So I think I'm going to just go. I'm just going to head on up there. See, I'm just going to take a shortcut. Just take a shortcut through here till I get to that corner. And then I will turn, put on my blinkers, and then I'll turn here. And then I'll take a shortcut right here and go across that green corduroy and stop here. And like I said, you know, you'll use a lot of thread, but you know what? It's good. It's all good in the hood. You know, you don't have to worry about that. You know, if you're a smoker or a drinker, all you're doing is wasting money. Drink your money and then you put it in the toilet. If you're a smoker, yeah, you're just burning it up. Might as well just burn it up. 
but we don't do that when you're scrapping you know you know you don't have to worry about that when you're scrapping all you have to buy is you know you don't hardly even have to buy scraps you you can go to your husband's closet and take out a couple shirts he probably won't miss them and cut them apart into pieces you know i was cutting blue jeans yesterday because in my kits i want to put denim too in my kits and so and you know what I threw away from them jeans was what I threw away fit in the palm of my hand. All the rest of it is safe. It is safe. Different pieces, you know, the pocket, the zipper, the seams. Oh, there's things you can make out of the seams out of blue jeans. And I had fun doing that. It was a lot of fun. And then when I threw away what I had to throw away that fit in the palm of my hand, I felt, I felt a sense of, what, a safety, something like, look what's going in the landfill, you know? And so clothing, if you have old clothing or new clothing, maybe you bought new clothing and then you don't like it and it's hanging in the closet with just all of your, um, all of the tags on them. Well, you know, here, I don't think, I think I'm done with this. Okay, I want to, um, oopsie, yeah, put your press your foot down, Elizabeth. I'm going to go up here to the corner. I'm just going to fly up to the corner, just take a shortcut. And, um, when I'm done with this, I'm going to go to my other crafting area because I feel like I want to paint some flags today because I mean, oh there's a piece right there I didn't get I'm just going across from corner to corner now just to get more color of thread on there now now for those of you who do slow stitching too you can um and did you see that I wasn't even guiding my fabric I just let it go where it wanted to go and, um, but I just noticed a piece up here that I didn't have. That I didn't have um, stitched on the edge of this one little piece of velvet. You know, then I might just show you how I'm going to attach these together. Now, I've got them all. Now. Now, I'm going to show you, well, how much time? Oh, 22 minutes is all I've had you, had your attention for only 22 minutes. Now, see, this is, now the whole thing is, it's um, all down. And look at the back. The back is the pretty side of the fabric, but it's got this red zigzags all over it. And look how cute that is. Isn't that adorable? So then you say, well, you could put a band around each and do all that fancy stuff. But I'm not into all that fancy stuff. So I'm going to take this piece that I did and this piece. And I'm going to put the back sides together like this. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this, put it together, rag quilt style. You see, rag quilt style. So I'm going to run a seam down here about three quarters of an inch. Three quarters of an inch. About that is what I'm going to do. Okay, I got to put this onto um, a straight stitch. Go to number one. There you go. Now, and I'm going to go right down with, um, well, take my word for it. My camera, I don't know how to turn it around. And I'm going to just go with. Three quarters of an inch let's go let's go guys and I'm gonna go all the way down with three quarters of an inch okay sewing those two together I have two more here to do also. This one and this one. Let's go ahead with these two too. These ones I didn't go as much to the edge. 
Well, I'm going to put those two together, too. And I'm going to do those three quarters of an inch. Now just hang on loose there. Hang loose for a minute. And so you can see what I'm doing this way. So, um, see, now, if, if somebody sees you doing this and um, they say, what in the world are you doing? Don't tell them where you learned it. Because, see, I'm not actually teaching you anything. I'm just showing you the weird stuff I do. Okay, now I've got those. There. Now, see, I just cut. I just, um, there. I just sewed those two together. See how? And the opening part of the seam is showing. The seam is showing. See there? Like this. So now I'm going to take these two pieces and I'll put them together with the back sides together. And see, the back sides together. Now I'm going to do the same thing, like three quarter of an inch. I'm going to um, hold these two pieces here open, if I can. I think I can. So when I get to that, so I'm going to still do them three quarters of an inch and... Um, Um, see, now I'm thinking, you know, if you don't have a sewing machine, you could do this all by hand, but you'd be here from now till doomsday, so, um, it would take a while. So, I am, now I'm getting to that intersection, so I want to kind of, I try to keep them intersections, um, straight so the lines kind of match up and that kind of thing if they don't well i'm not going to lose any sleep over that but now i'm going to now i've just about got those four squares sewn together and what i'll, I'll probably do is make four squares and then four squares and then four squares. Okay, and then put the four squares together. Now, you see how big of a mess we have here? Now, see, this is the back. So it pretty much looks finished. The seams are finished looking and it's like a patchwork. Nothing matchy-watchy, doesn't have to be. Now, I'm going to take my scissor and I am going to start snipping. And I'm just going to snip, like maybe every quarter of an inch. Now this might, if you're doing a whole quilt at one time, a whole piece at one time, then this would get kind of old. And that's why I, I, I'm working always on like 99 projects at a time, because I'll work on this for a little while, and then I'll stop, and I'll work on something else for a while, and... The only thing here is you got to be careful to watch for your straight seam and don't cut past that straight seam. And um, they call this rag quilting. There is really a word for this. And so in the seams, you completely cut all of them. You cut the seam your seams and you rag it. You just rag them and um, yeah this part takes a little while but you know what it doesn't matter. You don't have to do anything else if you have the sink full of dishes and then you just ignore them. Well just ignore them. They'll still be there later. It's not like any big deal you know. And um Oh, I do have an order of crumbs I gotta get out today, so I'll do that today. Get that before the mail runs. There, see, now I got that. Now I'm going to um, do the do the opposite way.
and so I'll get the this seam all done and now <clears throat> The thing about doing something like this is once you get this part all done and all this snipping done, and then you run it through the washing machine, all of this that you have um, snipped starts getting a little shaggy looking, and oh my word, is that an awesome look. <clears throat> It is an awesome look once they start once they're washed because I don't know why because because it just is because it just is it gets so pretty and I think it's pretty some of my three quarters of an inches here aren't exactly three quarters of an inch some of them are less because I um I sometimes I so crooked but this is something if you've got scraps if you've got scraps, you can do this. And if you don't have scraps, cut apart a pillowcase, cut apart a towel, cut apart a dish towel, cut apart whatever you have. I mean, you know what I did the other day? I had a nightgown, and it was a long nightgown, but it was just, you know, old. I cut the bottom off and made a short nightgown out of it. Yes, um... I just plum made a short nightgown out of it. I had the whole bottom of the nightgown, so I still have my nightgown. It's just shorter. Just chopped it off. I didn't ham it or nothing. But see, can you see that now, how them seams look once you've shagged them? And, and then once you, um, and they call this a rag quilt. Look at that. I think it's beautiful. I don't know if you think it's beautiful, but it is, take my word for it, it is beautiful and see and all of your seams like this on the whole thing will be like this now if you were to take like these are about a what size are these squares anyway these are about an eight by eight square on here if you were to take smaller ones like five by five squares and do this on it and make um like and then make a hobo bag out of it like a purse that would be so awesome I think that would be just beautiful. And so anyhow, that's just all I wanted to show you what I do with scraps. Another thing I do with scraps. Well, I just love scraps. I just love scraps. I got scraps everywhere. Uh, even on my floor. Even on my floor. Here, scraps up here, scraps. And I just sew them together. You know, this is something I was sewing. I don't know what the heck was that. But I'll still use it on something. But anyway, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to read you a little. Whoops. I dropped my, I dropped my, whatchamacallit. Poems for Troubled Times. Oh, my gosh. We are in troubled times these days. With, we are in troubled times. I want to ask if there's those of you out there who do pray. I have a granddaughter. Her name is Katie. And um, she has a husband named Justin. And she has two children named Taylor and Ella Grace. And um, Justin just got over the COVID. Now Katie has the COVID. And Ella Grace, who is four years old, has the COVID. The only one that doesn't have the COVID is Taylor. And Taylor is eight. So far, he doesn't have the COVID. But... Um, so they are not in school right now. They have, they have to wait 14 days from the day that Ella was the last one that was um, diagnosed with COVID. So they have to wait 14 days after they got to stay in quarantine before the two kids can go back to school. If Taylor doesn't get it too, they're trying. <laughs> I was talking to Katie. They live up there north of Alabama. They, they live in Alabama, north of Birmingham. But I was talking to Katie. I said, how are you doing this? She goes, well, Taylor is staying in his room. I'm disinfecting his room. And, and it's easier to quarantine Taylor than it is to quarantine the sick ones. Because Taylor's the only one well. So um, she, she said, I just sent him a Capri Sun 
and a um and a lunchable. I just slid him down the hallway. <laughs> she slid him down the hallway, and then he just opened his doors. His opened his door, got his um, got his Capri Sun and his lunchable for his little snack or meal or whatever it was. And um, she says, that's all I can do. I can just slip. He's got his own bathroom in there and stuff. And then he's doing his homework. You know, he does get his schoolwork done because he can do it, you know, via the computer. And so, bless their hearts. And, and they're doing well. They are doing well, even though they are all sick. They're doing well. Well, Taylor's not sick, but he's doing well, too. I hope he doesn't catch it as well. But he probably will since the other three. But anyway, but if you are the praying type, please, please pray for Justin, Katie, Ella, and Taylor. Bless their hearts. But anyhow, and, and to open up is poems for troubled times. These are troubled times when we're looking at that virus going around and, and the little ones getting it, you know, because at one time they said the little ones can't get it. Well, the little ones are getting it now. But here, let's let's see what this, what Helen Steiner Rice has to say about this. Let go and let God. When you're troubled and worried and sick at heart, and your plans are upset and your world falls apart, remember God's ready and waiting to share the burden you find, much too heavy to bear. So with faith, let go and let God lead the way into a brighter and less troubled day. So that's this one here. Now here, look at life is a mi mixture of sunshine and rain, and it is. We have to all agree with that that life is a mixture of sunshine and rain. Life is a mixture of sunshine and rain, laughter and teardrops, pleasure and pain, low tides and high tides, mountains and plains, triumphs, defeats, and losses and gains. But always, in always. God's guiding and leading, and he alone knows the things we're most needing. And when he sends sorrow or some dreaded affliction, be assured that it comes with God's kind benediction. And if we accept it as a gift of his love, we'll be showered with blessings from our Father above. And that is our reading for today. Life is a mixture of sunshine and rain. And so if you're having a rainy day, which rainy days aren't really bad, um, just know that soon will become a um, shinier day. Let me turn this camera up really, just see if I can just turn it up. Not that I want you to see me, because I don't want you to see me, but I want you to see my curtain. Do you see my curtain over there? There's my cutting table in front of the window and then on my curtain is all scraps not in any particular way or pattern it's just my scraps and that's what I've made and on my cutting table I've got my fabrics that I'm cutting to get ready for my um my Etsy store for my um my kits my collections they're not going to be kits right now just collections of fabrics and <clears throat> And yeah, so you'll be looking for the fabrics. I probably, once I actually get a fabric pack together and I see how much makes a pound, well then I'll probably show you them too. But I love my curtain. And the valance, I'll probably need, you know what I should do is just take that valance down and add patches to it. Just add patches here and there to it and then it will match the curtain a little bit better maybe put pom-poms on the end of the valance wouldn't that be pretty well i don't have any pom-poms so i can't do that but that would be cool okay so anyway that's my curtain i just wanted to show you that and um this is hair that hasn't been combed and um people are asking about my nose i'm going to get that done i'm gonna i've had a little trouble with the insurance company um i don't know if it's trouble i shouldn't call it trouble but you know um, I was first supposed to have the surgery on the 5th. Well, then they had to postpone it to the 26th. Well, um, well, then I get a call from them and said, well, they still haven't got clearance from the insurance company. And they actually 
suggested I call another dermatologist. So I did, and I've got an appointment on the 13th of September for consultation. And But it's already been biopsied. They know that it's, it's squamous cell carcinoma, which is not really bad. It's not really bad, bad, but it won't heal. So I kind of, it aggravates me. But um, I shouldn't let things aggravate me. But so we'll find out after the 13th as to if they can do it, if the insurance company will even um, allow them to do it. If not, I'll just have a nose like this and it just keeps getting bigger so it'll keep looking funnier. I don't know, whatever. And so anyway, so that's the beginning of my day and that's my complaint department. You know, you guys got my complaints. and But at least I have a nose and I can still breathe. So see, that's good. And um, I don't have a COVID, that's good. And so there's a lot of good. And so I'm going to let you all go now. Now it's been 41 minutes. And so I'm going to let you go now. But I ask God to watch over you. Every step you take, every move you make, keep you safe, keep you healthy, keep you happy, and bring you back to the another video, to the next video. And um, thank you so much for watching. You guys are awesome. You are awesome. And sew your scraps together and see what you come up with. That's my instruction. Sew your scraps together and see what you come up with. There's no instructions. Just do it. Okay, God bless. God bless. Where's my mouse? There it is. Okay.